Hi, I'm Tamara and today I am going to walk you through everything that you need to know so that you can make these adorable triangle zipper pouches here. Now if zippers intimidate you, then check out last week's tutorial, which I will link in the description down below. And last week's tutorial is where I taught you how to just do a simple zipper pouch project. And once you get the hang of this project, you will not feel intimidated at using zippers anymore and you will feel confident to move on into projects like this. So let's move on to the tutorial. So you're going to need two pieces of lining fabric, two pieces of outer fabric, as well as two pieces of interfacing. All of these pieces will be cut at seven inches by five and a half inches. You will also need two pieces of fabric and they will be attached to your zipper. They will be cut at two inches by five inches, as well as a zipper around seven inches in length. We will be trimming it down to the size that we prefer later. And one more piece of fabric that we will cut at seven inches by two inches and we will use that for the loop. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is attach our outer pieces of fabric to our interfacing. Make sure that you're attaching to the shinier side of your interfacing. That is the side where the glue is. And of course, follow your interfacing instructions. I liked to trim down my interfacing a little bit smaller than my actual fabric. That way when I'm ironing it and attaching it to the outer pieces of fabric, I'm not gumming up my iron by having that interfacing hanging outside the edges of the fabric. Once the interfacing has been attached to your outer two pieces of fabric, then take your seven inch by two inch piece of fabric and iron it in half creating a crease and then take your two outer edges and fold them in towards that center crease, ironing them in as well. And now you can fold your entire piece in half, give it one more press and then just put it aside for later. Next, it's time to adjust our zipper. So mark a five inch section in the center of your zipper. I'm doing this with a water soluble marker, but honestly you won't end up seeing the markings in the end, so don't be too concerned. If you wanna use a pencil or a pen, you can do that as well. Now it's time to take that zipper to our sewing machine and we are going to sew by both of those markings. Start with your first marking, which is close to the end of your zipper, and adjust your sewing machine stitch length to a zigzag stitch length, a wider zigzag, but a very short stitch. That way you just get a whole bunch of zigzags almost on top of each other, right by the line you marked. You will do this on the other side as well, but before you do, make sure that you pull your zipper into the center between those two markings. Then take your zipper back to your sewing machine, put it under your sewing foot, and the pressure of your sewing foot will hold those two zipper pieces in place so they won't move away from each other. And do the same thing, do your zigzag stitch in place over that same marked section. Once you've done that on both of your marked sections, then you'll be able to take your scissors and just cut right above those marked sections to cut away the excess of your zipper. Now we want to attach our zipper tabs to both ends of our zipper. To do this, take the two inch by five inch pieces you cut earlier, fold them in half right sides together and just give it a finger press in the middle there. That will create enough of a crease that when you open it up, you will be able to line up your zipper to the center along that crease fold it back over, and then we'll take it to our sewing machine to sew a seam across that edge. Sew this seam at a quarter of an inch. I just lined it up to the edge of my sewing foot and sewed across that way. Once that seam has been sewn, then flip that fabric right side out, finger press it again, take it to your sewing machine and sew across that outer edge. So again, I just lined it up along my sewing foot at about a quarter inch seam allowance and sewed straight across. You will do this to both sides of the zipper, so you will end up with tabs on both sides, and then just trim those tabs to line up with the outer edge of your zipper. Next, take your ironed seven inch by two inch piece of fabric, take it to your sewing machine, and you will want to sew along both outer edges. Both of these seams will end up being sewn at about one eighth of an inch. And now it's time to start piecing our zipper pouch together. So the first thing that you'll do is take one of your inner lining pieces of fabric, lay it right side facing up, 
and then center your zipper along the top edge with the zipper portion facing upwards. Then clip that zipper in place before you add the top layer, which will be an outer portion of fabric, and lay that right side face down on top of that zipper and then just take those clips and include that top layer. I like to do it this way, that way that bottom layer doesn't really move around too much while I'm attaching all three pieces together, and it's easier for me to keep the zipper in place as well. Then it'll be time to take this to your sewing machine, add your zipper foot to it, and we will stitch along that one edge. To do this, I will line the outer edge of my zipper foot with the outer edge of my pouch. I will do a quick back stitch and then I will sew along this outer edge until I start coming up to the zipper. When I start coming up to the zipper then I'll make sure that my needle is down in my fabric before I lift my presser foot up so that I can move the head of the zipper out of the way before I continue on down this line. Because if you try to just sew past that zipper head, what will end up happening is your seam will end up having a bit of an arc to it. So you don't want that. Once this seam is done, then just snip away the excess from those zipper tabs so it lines up with the outer edge. Then open up these two pieces of fabric, lay the zipper so that it is facing upright, finger press along the outer piece of the fabric, and then take it to your sewing machine to sew a top stitch along that edge. When sewing this top stitch, I just kept my zipper foot on and sewed as close to that inner edge as I could. Make sure that you have a bit of a longer stitch length because it's just a nicer look. And of course, watch out for that zipper. Make sure that when you get close to it, you keep your needle down in your fabric, you lift up the presser foot, that way you can move the zipper out of your way. Then you will repeat these last two steps to attach your secondary lining and outer fabric to the other side of your zipper. If you want a visual of how this is done, I do have a zipper pouch tutorial that I will link up above as well as down below. And in that tutorial, I do show how you attach both sides of the fabric to both sides of the zipper. Now that all four pieces of fabric have been attached to our zipper, open it up so that the right sides of the lining and the right sides of the outer pieces of fabric are facing each other. And then fold the zipper tabs so that they are facing towards the inner lining and clip both ends of the zipper this way. Then put clips along both outer edges and mark with a pin on the lining side about a two inch mark that you will not sew. Next, have a look at the inside of your pouch and where your zipper will end if it's closed, that's where you will want to attach your little loop. So take that longer seven inch by two inch piece that we sewed seams on both outer edges, fold it in half and then tuck it as close as you can to where that zipper is and pin it in place. And then you can pin the rest of the way along. And then we will take this to our sewing machine and sew along both sides. So both of these seams at a quarter inch seam allowance and I like to start closest to where that pin is that we've put in place. Don't forget to back stitch. So towards the pin, do a little back stitch again, then move forward not sewing about two, two and a half inches worth of space on that lining there where the pin was and then go forward, go slowly over this thicker area here. And where this tab is, I like to back stitch, or sorry, the loop, I like to back stitch over the loop and go forward again just to reinforce it. And then go all the way down to that corner and back stitch again. Then do the same quarter inch seam allowance on the opposite side, back stitching when you start and when you stop. Once both of these side seams have been sewn, then open up the end and just have a look inside, making sure that your zipper is open halfway. And now we need to pin both ends shut. To do this though, you're actually going to want to match up those two outer edge seams together and pin along it that way. By doing this, you are creating your triangle pouch. So do this for both sides, then we'll take it to our sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam across both outer edges. And don't forget to backstitch when you start and when you stop. 
Next, it's time to turn the entire thing right side out. So find that opening that we left in our inner lining and reach on in. You can slide that zipper all the way open if you can actually reach it and then turn the entire thing right side out. Then use something like a chopstick to reach on in and point out all of your corners. Be very careful when you're doing this to not push so hard that you actually push the point out completely. And also take some time to push out our zipper tabs as well. They have a nice crisp look as well. Next, take it to your iron and your opening within your lining, just iron your folds in. That way you've created a nice edge that you can take back to your sewing machine and just sew very close along that outer edge to close the lining of your pocket. And now it's time to tuck that lining back on in to our zippered pouch and you can point those corners out and then close that zipper and admire your work. And that, my friends, is everything that you need to know so you can make these adorable triangle pouches. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want more tutorials like this one. And as always, I hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.